Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Mustache MMA, and welcome to Parlay Plays UFC Fight Night. Johnny Walker versus Jamal Hill. I'm going to create a couple different parlays that I like for this card. That includes even money parlays, which is about even money to anywhere up to plus 200. Juicy parlays, which is anywhere plus 300 to plus 800 uh, range. And then uh, long shot parlays, 1,000 or more. Um, so yeah, before I get into it, I'm going to uh, show my results from last week. Uh, so best parlay week um, for the year uh, was last week. Uh, best week overall was was last week. 271 was very profitable for, profitable for me. Um, I was up over 10 units for both my best bets and parlays uh, combined. So anyway, uh, parlays went four for six for net of plus 5.99 units, just under six. Uh, even money parlays went two for two. Uh, Wells inside the distance, O'Neal money line and over 1.5 hit. Um, and then Orlovsky Van Der, FICO's distance, Hack, Hack Press Green, FICO's distance also hits. Juicy Parlays went 1 for 2. Um, Olberg KO, um, that one ended up losing. He won by decision. Uh, Phillips inside the distance, Cannoneer KO, TKO. So I did get two out of three legs on that. Unfortunately, did not cash that one. And then uh, this other one, uh, Lawrence by decision, Perez by decision. The Alex Perez fight was uh, scrapped before. So this really wasn't necessarily, I guess you could say a juicy parlay, um, really only one leg, but nevertheless it hits with Lawrence winning by decision. And then uh, long shot parlay, first long shot parlay of the year to hit um, was O'Neal money line, Arlovsky money line, green money line uh plus 1230 pretty good one uh returned 3.33 units and then also a lost the other long shot parlay in hernandez decision to ivasa ko hernandez um getting subbed by morcano in the second and then uh to ivasa hitting actually getting a ko in the second um so one of two legs on that really big parlay there uh but yeah anyway uh February results, 5 for 12, um, 4.94 units. And then for the year, I'm up 7.18 units for my parlays. So uh, you steady folks, steady picks folks on uh, on Steady Picks Radio listening in, uh, don't sleep on my parlays. Keep a good ear out for these ones because um, I've been pretty hot and pretty consistent with these. So anyway, uh, going to get on with the parlays for the card. Um, First parlays I'm going to go through is even money parlays uh, around even money to up to plus 200. Um, so first parlay, I got uh, Belbita and DePaulo, fight goes the distance, um, combined with Adolkis money line that comes out to plus 103 over on DraftKings. Um, Belbita and DePaulo, both super durable girls. Um, you know, both of them do have finishes on their resume, but they are two very low level opponents who aren't really that great. Um, coming into the UFC, neither of them have gotten a finish via KO. Uh, DePaulo, her last time out, she did get finished. Um, good thing to note. However, she did get finished on a um, head kick knockout when she was, um, you know, it was a clinch or she may have been on the ground, scrambled back to her feet and got clipped on the way up with a head kick. Um, so I don't put too much um, value into that knockout uh, loss. Um, Belbita, you know, she's more of a volume striker. She doesn't have the power really anyway. And again, DePaulo, she does show that she has power, but again, she's only really knocked out three out of her five wins, and those three opponents are, are very low level. So I do like the fight goes the distance there. And then Dawkins' money line, I think Dawkins is um, better everywhere than Jimmy Pickett. Um, you know, better in the wrestling department, better in the grappling department by far. And then the striking department, honestly, I think he does have an edge on Jimmy Pickett as well. Um, the only thing is, you know, uh, I don't know how Dawkins is going to win it. Uh, I'm very confident that he will. Uh, I'm just not sure how long. Also, Jamie Pickett coming in on short notice for this fight. You know, it doesn't have a full camp against Dawkins. Um, could definitely pose trouble for him. Um, you know, I lean Dawkins getting a submission, but again, ground and pound is live, um, and even a decision is live. Uh, Jimmy Pickett is uh, pretty durable, as we've seen in the past, uh, only getting knocked out once in his career, submitted once in his career. Um, so yeah, again, that even money parlay was Belbita and DePaulo, fight goes the distance, Dawkins money line, 
plus 103 over on DraftKings. Moving on to the second even money parlay, I got Clark and Eggers, the other female MMA fight on this card. Uh, fight goes the distance. Another fight goes the distance. Uh, and then Onama money line that comes out to plus six one uh, plus one sixty one over on DraftKings. Um, Clark and Egger fight goes the distance. Um, yeah, Jessica Jessica Rose Clark. She is a super essentially decision machine. Whether she wins or loses, she's constantly going to decisions. A majority of her wins, a majority of her losses have gone to decisions. She tends to she does have some decent power actually in her hands but generally she likes to go to the wrestling likes to go to the grappling game and on that grappling game she's more position over submission um um grappler she controls you really well when she's on top really good top control and that doesn't necessarily um look for anything too damaging in terms of ground and pound and doesn't really tend to look for too many submissions either um, or at least, you know, maybe she slowly works her way to get there. But, you know, we haven't seen much from her in terms of, um, you know, showing that she's a threat on the ground. Um, Edgar, on the other side, she has, um, she did come off a, uh, most recently a win and a finish um, over Shanna Young. Um, I, I don't think Shanna Young is the, the greatest of competition, again. Um, but, you know, Edgar is does have some pretty decent hands, some pretty decent wrestling as well, and, and decent grappling as well. Um, but I, both, I think both these girls match up pretty well with each other. Uh, I don't think they're one of their skills, uh, one person's skill set offsets the other in a great manner. I, I think it's very even. And, uh, you know, for that matter, I think they're going to be able to hold on to each other and kind of, uh, you know, ride out a decision. Um, Onama Moneyline. Um, I just really favor Onama here. I mean, it could be the recency bias of him, you know, coming in on short notice, fighting up a weight class against a really good opponent and handling himself quite well, hurting his opponent at times, winning and securing one out of three rounds. And, uh, you know, the only thing obviously was that um, takedown defense and that bottom control. He was constantly getting dumped and taken down. Um, although, you know, he was able to get back up to his feet a lot. He was calm on the ground. He wasn't freaking out and turning into bad positions where he could, could have been finished. Um, but him going up against Gabriel Benitez, uh, you know, Gabriel Benitez is definitely a veteran of the game. He's fought a lot of top-level competition. Um, so that just goes to show how much um, they uh, value the skill set of Onama in the UFC because they're going to put him up against a top-level competitor right off the bat here. Um, you know, Gabriel Benitez, I, I like his striking as well. Um, but, and his wrestling's decent as well, his grappling's decent. Um, but, you know, getting up there in age a little bit, Onama, the younger guy here, you know, Onama, I just think he has the better crisper striking. Um, you know, a area where Onama may be vulnerable, obviously, is that wrestling department. Um, but again, he was up a weight class. Now he's at his natural weight class. So he actually may show better um, takedown defense now that he's up against some lighter opponents. Um, so yeah, um, second even money parlay, Clark Egger, fight goes the distance, combined with Onama money line. That comes out to plus six plus 161 over on DraftKings. Um, moving on to juicy parlays. These are anywhere from plus 300 to plus 800. Um, first parlay is going to be Buckley Al-Hassan. Fight goes the distance. Hear me out on that one. Um, and then Hill by KOTKO. That comes out to plus 501 over on FanDuel. Now, Buckley Al-Hassan fight goes the distance. People are going to think I'm crazy and an idiot to play this or even put it in a parlay that I'm essentially burning my money. Um, but I'm thinking of this playing out similar to Lee to like these guys are going to respect each other power. Buckley's going to be really conservative in that first round because Al Hassan, that's what he does. He finishes everyone in the first round. And if he doesn't finish them in the first round, he doesn't get a win, which has been um, the case in all of his fights in his career. Um, you know, Al Hassan has starched a lot of people in the first round, but. You know, he's proven if you wrestle with him a little bit, if you clinch up with him a little bit, that power isn't as effective. Uh, he starts to gas a little bit, so on and so on. 
Now, Bakui, uh, only been finished twice in his career. Once, uh, most recently, by Alexi Chichurio, by a head kick knockout. Again, you know, a head kick knockout that's going to knock out anybody pretty much if it hits clean. Um, so, and then also the, um, the other time in the UFC being finished to um, Kevin Holland, who obviously we all know. Kevin Holland, really good striker, really long, really powerful. Um, also, that was in the third round, too. So he took quite a lot of damage from um kevin holland before actually going out and then alisson on the other side only being finished once by who chaos williams he's got the best power in that division i believe um you can definitely say you could argue top top best power in the division definitely at least top five top five top three power in that division so Sure, he gets starched one time in, in 15 seconds. Does that mean his chin is totally terrible? No, I think he's actually pretty durable. Um, you know, just because you get knocked out once by one the most powerful guy in the division doesn't mean you're going to keep getting knocked out by guys who have lesser power. And that's been shown in his other fights in the UFC. Um, so, yeah, both these guys, I think, are tough. Um, although both of them having power, I think they're going to respect each other's power. It's it's going to be more of a chess match to land that power shot. Guys are going to they're going to get tired. Their power is going to um, not relax, blanking on the lure, but their their power is going to fade as those rounds go on. And uh, we I think we will potentially see this one go the distance. Um, and I'd like it as a a, a juicy parlay piece. Um, and then combine that with a, a pretty favorable bet in, in Hill, KO, TKO. Um, you know, again, um, I said this on my best bets video. Uh, I think Johnny Walker is very chinny. He's been rocked a bunch in all different multiple fights that he's been in, uh, some of his losses and some of his wins. So um, with that being said, I really like Jamal Hill to put on the pace, put on the pressure, um, actually force Johnny Walker to fight, unlike his last fight with, with Thiago Santos, where Johnny Walker and Thiago Santos just stared at each other for five rounds, and it was ridiculously boring. So I like Hill to actually put on a pressure on him and actually make him fight, and they're going to brawl. Hill's going to land the better shots. Hill has a better chin. Hill is going to knock the living hell out of Johnny Walker. So, uh, yeah, recapping that juicy parlay, Buckley and Al Hassan fight goes the distance with Hill KOTKO plus 501 on Fandle. Uh, the second juicy parlay I got, um, I got Clark by decision and Pierce Rodriguez fight goes the distance. This comes out to plus 572 over on DraftKings. Again, Jessica Rose Clark, I'm not going to go into it as depth because I just went over that um, earlier in the video, but I, I favor Jessica Rose Clark here to get a decision. I think her wrestling and grappling, um, top control, top pressure is um, really going to get the edge here over Egger, um, and she's going to have a good success with that grappling control, top control, keeping her on the mat, um, staying clear of any submissions that Edgar may throw up and, you know, slowly chipping away at a lot of control time to win some rounds. Um, going to the second leg, Pierce and Rodriguez, fight goes the distance. Um, this one also, you may be scratching your head, um, but hey, Pierce, uh, he's only gone to decision. He's only had one decision victory. I don't know about his losses. Um, but nevertheless, um, you know, some of his uh, decision uh, or some of his finish victories haven't been from the best opponents. You know, Pierce has yet to fought some really good opponents. I'm not saying that Rodriguez is, um, you know, a sharpened veteran or a champ. He's obviously very new and obviously new to the UFC. Um, but, um, you know, Pierce, he does have a really high pace, high pressure, um, good wrestling, good grappling, looks to get your back, um, ground and pound, looks for submissions. Um, so, yeah, and, and on the Rodriguez side, 7-0, and 6 of 7 knockouts. Again, only one win by decision. So two two decision wins between these guys apart. But I think, you know, Rodriguez is, is favorable on the feet. He is good. Um, much better striking than Pierce, I believe. Um, and Pierce has the better grappling and the wrestling. Um, Rodriguez's takedown defense is actually pretty decent. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of clinch exchanges here and got like pushed up against the fence. Um, 
Rodriguez may get taken down, but I think he can handle himself down there, and I think he can eventually work his way up and keep himself safe. And then Pierce on the feet, uh, you know, again, he has the striking disadvantage in my mind, uh, but Rodriguez doesn't have the greatest power. He's more of, you know, uh, combinations and a volume type guy to get those KOTKOs. Um, but uh, Pierce, um, super good chin, super good chin, super durable, super tough. Only finished once in his career um, via KO and strikes, and uh, that came from uh, Joe Lorizon, um, I believe is his last name. And he just got caught in a weird spot where he got stuck on the cage and, and couldn't really defend himself and just got pounded away. So zero, absolutely no um, you know, weight to that KO loss in my mind. Um, so again, recapping on that, second juicy parlay, Clark by decision. And Pierce Rodriguez, FICO's distance, plus 572 over on DraftKings. Moving up to the fun ones, uh, long shot parlays. Ann Heigler, first one is Ann Heigler decision uh, with Miller inside the distance, plus 1300 over on DraftKings. Ann Heigler by decision. Um, he is fighting um, Jesse Strader, who um, both of his losses have come from KOs in the first round. However, uh, both of those opponents, both of those fights were a little weird. So his first loss came to Marcelo Rojo, who's actually in the UFC, just fought against Kyler Phillips and got finished in the third round by submission. Um, but Jesse Strader had him pretty much done um, and in the water, had him hurt, almost finished him, went essentially all out to get the finish, didn't get it, gassed out, got finished himself in the first. Don't hold a lot of weight to that. Next, um, his most recent and last fight, he got finished by, um, um, am I blanking on his name? Um, anyway, the, the opponent is top 20 material, a uh, really good fighter in the Bantamweight division. Uh, he's known, he has a good amount of finishes on his resume. Um, so I don't, I don't also hold that one with too much weight, although I ha I'll hold it with higher weight than the um, Marcelo Rojo fight. Um, also, last fight, we saw a lot of patience from Jesse Strader. Um, a lot, in a lot of his fights in the undercards, he is a super aggressive, in-your-face pressure fighter. We didn't see that last fight, which is an interesting game plan because I think, you know, stepping up against these higher-level competition guys, he's probably thinking, okay, I probably can't starch these guys in the first round like I'm used to, so I have to conserve the gas tank. I have to be able to go longer than what I do in my previous fights. Um, and Iger on the other side, um, he gets a lot of finishes as well. However, um, his last two finishes come from, um, came in the third round. Um, his last fight um, was won by split decision, although against a um, very good opponent um, and durable opponent as well. Um, so Ann Langer, you know, he has the technicality on the feet, um, technicality advantage, but Strader uh, has the power advantage. So uh, I like Ann Langer to brawl here. I like them both to brawl. I like it to probably stay on the feet for the most of the time. Um, but yeah, I think Ann Langer definitely wins this one. Um, and he's either going to get a late finish or a decision. Um, so I like the decision play, the odds for the decision play in a long shot parlay. Um, so yeah, that's the first leg. Uh, second leg, Miller inside the distance. Uh, Miller, known for a finisher, going up against Nicholas Mata. I don't understand the hype on Nicholas Mata. Again, um, I've said it in the last video. I'll say it again. Uh, he has the, he throws the same striking combination, straight right, left hook, over and over and over again. Eighty percent of his strikes are that combination. Um, and I think Miller is a veteran. He knows that he's going to be able to read that every time and make that miss most of the time. Miller, his striking is pretty decent. We saw in his last fight, he actually got a knockout victory, which isn't, which he's not known for that. He's a high level grappler. He's known for his grappling and getting those submission victories. Um, you know, Miller in his fights, um, he doesn't go to a lot of decision victories. Uh, most of his fights do come via finish. Um, so I do think that Miller can get this done. Um, his opponent as well, Nicholas Mata, um, he's been finished by strikes twice, twice in his career and finished once by submission in his career. And if you count a um, Ultimate Fighter exhibition match, he's been submitted twice in his career. So two submission uh, losses, two 
knockout losses. So this dude can is susceptible to getting finished. And uh, a veteran in Miller and his toughest test to date, I think Miller is definitely going to put him away. So uh, recapping that, um, long shot parlay, on Heigler decision, uh, Miller inside the distance, plus 1,300 over on DraftKings. And the last parlay of the card and uh probably my favorite parlay even though it is is the juiciest probably that's probably why but um parker porter by kotko in the second or third round and then striegel um mark striegel by decision this comes out to plus 2396 over on fanduel really really high odds but let me tell you why i like both these legs and i think they're they have a high probability of hitting porter kotko second or third round Porter going up against uh, a guy in Alan Badeau. Um, he's been finished in every single one of his losses. All bite, there's only two, but it, technically it's actually three um, because one of those wins that he has was a disqualification of the other p- fighter because he like tested positive for marijuana or something like that. So, um, you know, Porter uh, having a good amount of finishes on his resume as well, four by TKO, four by submission. I favor the KO TKO. Um, reason being is Porter is going to probably use his wrestling advantage um, to to edge here. Um, Alan Badeau isn't the greatest wrestler. He's not really great off his back is all. He just can't really do much on there. He's more of a stand-up fighter. Um, a lot of movement we see from him. But another thing about Alan Badeau is he really is only a round one fighter. And uh, he just kind of gasses after that in the second and the third round. He might last in like the first half of the second round but after that he's done so i think porter is easily um all over and gonna take advantage of that piece him up on the ground may get a standing may get a a ko on the feet but i think it's more likely that he probably takes this one to the ground uses his wrestling tires him out pretty heavily and then second third round again goes back to that wrestling gets a ground and pound victory could get a submission but i definitely favor ground and pound here um so yeah it's the first leg and then striegel by decision as well um i like mark striegel here to win out um by decision reason being um, his opponent in Chaz Skelly, super high level grappler. Yeah, sure. But his wrestling, not great. His striking, not great. Mark Striegel, his striking, pretty decent. His wrestling, pretty decent. His grappling, pretty good. Not all, probably on the same level. His grappling is probably not on the same level as Chaz Skelly, but I think it's good enough to handle and, and keep with Chaz Skelly. Um, so for those reasons for the edge, for Striegel to edge him out like that, I, I on the feet and with the wrestling, he may be able to stuff those takedowns of, um, of blanking on his name, just said it, Chaz Skelly. He may be able to stop those takedowns of Chaz Skelly pretty frequently, keep it on the feet for the majority of the round. And if he wants to, he could get a takedown himself. He could use his grappling himself. He just has to be careful of not getting sweeped or um, getting reversed, anything like that. That's going to be bad news if Chaz Kelly um, probably gets in a dominant position. Uh, Striegel has been finished twice by submission. Um, Striegel, also all of his um, finished victories have been via submission, and Chaz Kelly never been finished in via submission in his career. So, uh, you know, I like Striegel to win in on the feet, win in the wrestling department, and edge out the grappling department to get a close decision victory. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that long shot parlay and it, it's huge odds and I think it has a really good chance of hitting. Um, so recapping that last one, Porter KO, TKO, second or third round, Striegel decision plus 2,396 over on FanDuel. Um, and then to recap as well, the way I put, um, units on these, uh, parlays, even money parlays, I put on one unit. Juicy parlays, I put a half a unit. Long shot parlays, I put a quarter unit. Um, That's kind of what I bet. Um, It it makes the most sense to do that because you don't want to put too many units on these juicy or long shot parlays um, because they're not going to hit very often and you're just going to be in the red. So you got to even it out that way. It makes the most sense. Um, Yeah, so looking forward to this card. Uh, This is going to be the last video for this card. excited to watch all these fights i think they're good a lot of them are going to be actually really good and competitive fights even though we have some pretty shrewd um odds going on um so yeah if you guys like this video please hit the subscribe button please hit the like button 
And uh, if you got any parlays you're, you're thinking about playing yourself, leave them down below in the comments. Or if you got any thoughts on my parlays, if you like them or dislike them, yeah, let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and I'll see you later.